Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. Today, I have with me Erin Fugate. Now, we connected through social media, and I saw everything she was doing in her business. We had a quick text conversation, and I was like, we got to get you on the Six Figure Success Series. So let me tell you a little bit about Erin. Erin has been has over 15 years of experience in sales and team building. She loves teaching vision-led entrepreneurs about her favorite wellness tools. Her top-rated podcast, Jasmine and Juniper, empowers women to turn their pain into their purpose. Erin lives in Southern Oregon with her husband and two young children. So welcome to the show, Erin. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm Super excited to have you here because I love anytime I get to to share with my audience somebody who's done what many think is tricky, difficult, whatever. And that is you've reached the six figures or six figures and beyond in your business. So tell us your story. How did you get here with 15 years in the business? Yeah, so I come from one of those families where every other year somebody was presenting a network marketing opportunity. (laughs) Right? Of course. And my grandma was actually very successful in World Book back in the 50s. Oh, wow. So I did have an understanding that you could be successful in direct sales. I also had an understanding of how I would never want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, my family member would call me up and say, you got to sign up. I'm going to build underneath you. You got to just buy this like chocolate or this phone service. And so I never thought I would be in network marketing. It was <laughs> not like my jury to be in network marketing one day. And I was actually in the entertainment industry. So I was a photographer, a producer. I owned a booking agency for DJs. And I was living like the party girl dream in Los Angeles, California. And there's a big downside to that lifestyle. And I got to be in my early 30s and I was drinking heavily. I was doing drugs. I felt like my life was totally a mess. My body was breaking down. I was starting to have autoimmune type symptoms. And I looked myself in the mirror one day and I went, do you want to be this person when you're 50 years old? Mm. Do you want do you want to become a mom and be like, bye, kids, I'm going to go to the club. And it was just this come to Jesus moment with myself where I was like, yeah. OK, girlfriend, we need to change our life. We need to drastically change our life. And I didn't know what I was going to do because I had no formal education. I was homeschooled. I had my GED and a couple of years of college, but I was basically a college dropout, super low self-esteem. Mm. and lots of emotional issues, no relationships that were lasting. I sucked at relationships. And right before I started my network marketing business, I actually canceled my social media accounts. So I had no network, right? But I was searching. I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And I had this thought in my head, which was, it would be so cool if I could have a job in health and wellness because it would force me to be healthy. Right? Mm, yes, that makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It's kind of like the girl math trend. <laughs> so I started going down the track of I'll become a yoga teacher, or maybe I'll go back to school and become a chiropractor, some kind of healer. And one day as I was in yoga class, I got off the mat, I went into the lobby and this man walked up to me and he said, I hear you like essential oils. 
And at that point, I did not like essential oils. That was my mom. She was like the crazy oil lady. (laughs) She had all the oils. If she could have straightened my teeth with oils, she would have done that. And I was like, no, wrong girl. You you got to talk to my mom. He's like, I want to talk to you. And he started to tell me that he was a part of a new network marketing company. They sold essential oils. And they were looking for people who wanted to be educators. And there was something about right time, right place. I was desperate. Mm. And it connected the dots. I was like, essential oils are going to be really hot. This was back in 2008. Okay. Nobody knew about essential oils back then. Nope. (laughs) And so my marketing brain was like, "Uh, essential oils are going to be really hot. It's health and wellness. And then his mom had been super successful in network marketing. And so he, he breathed that belief into me. He was like, listen, my mom, I was raised with a network marketing mom. My whole life has been paid for by network marketing money. If she can do it, you can do it. Mm. And there was something about the way that he, he saw something in me. The product made sense. And yeah, it was that transfer of belief that I went, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. The crazy thing is I didn't have any credit cards. I had horrible credit. I didn't have a full-time job. I had a part-time job. I was on government assistance and I spent the last $150 that I had in my bank account to buy my starter kit. Oh, wow. And talk about like, if I I look back in time and I'm like, you were crazy. (laughs) What were you doing? And what I wanted is I wanted my network marketing business to bring me $1,500 a month. Because if I could have $1,500 a month, rent would always be paid. And then I could go figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I could take that like level of stress off of myself. So I decided, you know, to bet the farm, which was every dollar I have. Wow. That's the that's the beginning. And we can oh. go many places from there, but I'm gonna let you yeah. tell me where you can go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. What came up for me when you were talking about it being your last dollar, right? What that tells me is that you were that like the first piece of your success comes from the fact that you had to succeed because it was your last dollar going towards this right? You were fully invested in every sense of the word, right? Does that is it, you're nodding your head, right? So there's people who are listening who have no idea. So you're nodding your head. So yeah, it was a full investment. Tell me how that affected how you move forward from, you know, okay, I bought the kit. Now what? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, looking back, that was a smart move for me. Right. I need, I, I'm i neurodivergent and I procrastinate. I yes. <laughs> so I work really well under pressure. Yeah. And the way that I looked at it is, first of all, I understood that most businesses don't turn a profit for three years. Mm-hmm. So I was okay with the fact that I would not turn a profit for three years. However, I knew that I could break even in less than 30 days. And what I did is I purchased a kit of product that I could break up into samples. Mm. I didn't actually buy myself product at first. Okay. Which some people might be like, what? What are you talking about? You have to be a product of the product. But I already knew essential oils because of my history with my mom. Right. And I was okay with delayed gratification. So I said, I'm going to buy this product. I have 30 days to sell it hand to hand. And I'm going to treat it as though I'm sampling people, but they're going to pay me for their samples. Mm. And I sold that product within seven days. And so, boom, I broke even. And I was like, (laughs) I broke even in seven days. And I congratulated myself. Like that was a win. I meet so many people. I mentor so many people that go, I'm only making $500 a month. (laughs) And I'm like, you're making $500 a month. Congratulations. And for me, I was like, you broke 
even girlfriend sold a hundred and fifty dollars worth of product. Yeah, and so that you know that that self celebration and also realistic timeline and also that extreme pressure was the secret sauce for me. Mm. Ah, yes. Okay, so it all comes down to it. Sounds like in in this is first off the mindset, right? must succeed because I have no other choice (laughs) that like being full all in. I mean, this is what I talk about in my trainings of how to one of the keys to success in direct sales and network marketing. One of the keys is all in got to be all in. And I love that mindset shift that you talk about the people who are, you know, saying, well, I'm only making this and I don't care what number is there. I don't care what number, because for everybody, that number is different. And there's somebody who's looking at the person who's making $500 going, you're making $500. Like, oh my God, I want to know how to do that. And there's other people who are looking at the $500 going, that's a start. (laughs) Right? So it's, you know, it's a good thing to recognize that these are all stepping stones, right? Making the, the $100 or $150 in the first week. Holy cow, because statistically, if you look at the Federal Trade Commission, because they follow and do a lot of statistics around network marketing and direct sales, statistically, now, who knows who they're including in this, most network marketers don't even make $1,000 a year, right? So that $150 in a week, if somebody were to do $150 a week every time, like, that adds up to way more than a thousand dollars because you've hit your thousand dollars in two months, basically. If I'm mathing right, <laughs> close enough, right? So, you know, it's that subjective mindset, right? Like it's all subjective. It is. And it's important not to let yourself become a statistic because the truth is, most people get into network marketing, they don't take it seriously enough. They're often there for the product, mm-hmm. not fully the business. So that statistic, I feel like it's really skewed. Agreed. Agreed, yes. right? So just, yes. But this is the message to you is don't be that statistic. Treat it like a business. Mm-hmm. You can love the product, but I'm like, I used to do a lot of drugs. I used to hang out with a lot of drug dealers. So I can't help but say, don't get high on your own supply. Like, <laughs> <or, laughs> right? <laughs> You can cut that out if you need to. No, I freaking love it. (laughs) But truly, like this is a business. Yeah, This is your inventory. You do need to be a product of the product. So you do have to use it and have stories. But know your numbers. Yeah, Be mindful with it. And if you you have been doing this for over three years and you haven't made a dollar, I think you need to get a different job. Mm -hmm. Or level up get the right coach, figure it out, but treat just treat it like a business is the message. Absolutely. Yes. Treat it like a business. And I love that. Yes. And right. It's the, you know, know your numbers and yes, be a product of the product. And right. You don't want to be sitting there buying hundreds of dollars of product going, oh, I'll sell it. I'll sell it. No, 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 no. No more buying it until you sell what you got get it out there, right? Because the product on your shelf does nothing for you. I I mean, I used to tell people all the time because I was I was in the bling business and I'd have people who'd be like, oh my gosh, I have all this jewelry just sitting here. And I'm like, if you have to, give it away. If you have to, give it away to get parties, right? It's not just like, just go put a necklace on somebody and be like, you're welcome. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's, use what you have to get more of what you want. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enough of me. So getting <laughs> back to your getting back to your six figure journey, right? So you had all of that going on. At what point did the so you started with your 150 in your first week? At what point did you start getting to the point where you were now team building? Because that's really how you get to six figures, right? I mean, is that that team building aspect, because it's virtually impossible for somebody to make six figures selling by themselves. Uh, Within 20 minutes of enrolling. So I enrolled. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And then I 
went to my mom's house and I was like, you got to do this. Yeah. And she was all in. And then immediately I, I treated this aspect in the beginning as though, not that you couldn't be just a customer, but why would you want to? Yeah. So you said you can be just a customer, but why would you want to be? Right. So every person, every person that I sampled, every person that I invited to a party, every person that enrolled, the pitch or the invitation was, yes, bring these amazing products into your life and make a few dollars by sharing them. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't enroll customers. Mm. Later on in my evolution, I realized that customers were important too. And I started to broaden my scope. But if I were to go back in time, I would do it the same way. When you're first launching, you're not looking for customers. You're looking for team leaders. And every team leader is going to be a customer, right? So yes. don't worry about the customer part. Just look for leaders. Look for people who see the value. They want to make extra money. They love the product so much. They want to get it for free. And make sure you're partnered with a company that has a product that people love. Like, yeah. That's really important too. Like make sure your product is just explodes with, oh my God, I got to have this. And I want to have more of it. And I want it for free. And I want to share it. And I can't help but talk about it. Then they start getting those paychecks. And mm -hmm. I would have my team call me and go, Erin, the company just sent me a hundred dollar paycheck. I was like, yeah, isn't that great? But it was almost that I just created this energy and this community of, we love the product so much that we can't shut up about it. And isn't it cool that the company sends us a check? And that bred so much excitement and it became like started to spread like a wildfire, which is what they call duplication these days. Yeah. Back then, I didn't know that languaging. I just knew that I was creating a community that wanted to talk about what we had. Mm, yes. Okay. So for the person who's listening right now, who maybe hasn't started team building to that extent, right? It's not too late. You can start doing it right now. Like make the decision, right? To enroll people with the purpose of team building instead of customers. Yes. There is a benefit. Yes, everybody needs customers. But if you've already been in the business for a certain amount of time and you've got customers, great, you've got it. Now it's time to, to get into that team building mode, helping people. And what I found really interesting because I, I've in this conversation of talking to lots of six-figure earners already. So I haven't hit my goal of talking to a hundred of them yet. So if you know others, I'd love an introduction. But one of the patterns I've started to see and what you actually brought up is talk to leaders, influencers, people who already have a network. This is what I'm seeing as a pattern from all these people that I'm talking to. So right now I'm talking to the badass crew listening right now. Find your influencers, right? And maybe not the ones who have like a million followers on Insta, right? An influencer can be somebody who has a hundred raving fans on Facebook, Insta, TikTok, whatever. Like they are, they're going to have lots of followers. Yes. But you want the ones who like have the people who will do anything <laughs> this person says yeah. because then they team build quickly under you. Yeah. That and that, you know, an influencer, a good way to think about this is who do you know that always is telling you about the next great restaurant or the next great hair product? Or who do you know that wears a pair of shoes and within a couple of months, all her friends bought the same pair of shoes? Mm. That is your influencer friend. And they may not even be on social media. Right. And sure, we love social media. It works so great. But there are people in the, at the PTA meeting, at drop-off, at soccer practice, in your yoga class, in your office, it could be your post woman. There are people all around you that are influencers within your own town and your own area. And they're the ones 
that you want to share this with because they so naturally share with other people. Right. Ah, oh, there you go. See that that nugget right there. People will hopefully walk away and go, okay, now I'm starting to look for the influential people that I can bring in, right? Because then they help with the team building aspect too. I think it was probably the episode that that's going to play right before your episode um, with Dr. Stan, the breakthrough man. He talks, uh, he talked about the fact that he got started in network marketing after being a complete and total skeptic. Okay. And he was an evangelistic pre, uh, pastor, meaning he didn't have a church. He went from church to church to church. And how he built his team so fast was finding those influencers who turned out to be the deacons and pastors of the churches where he was doing his evangelism, right? Yeah. Because they'd see him drinking the shake, taking the supplement, doing whatever, and be like, man, you look so much better and healthier than the last time we saw you last year when you came through. What happened? He holds up the product. This, this is what happened. And they wanted some. And so he got them involved and then they got people involved and they got people involved, right? The whole church, right? So finding those people like that, that's how you build and grow, right? That's a great way to get to six figures. So you're glad you did it that way. Because even looking back, you're like, yep, 100% would do it again the same way because obviously it's worked, right? What are some other things that you're glad that you did in your fur in your journey to your first six figures? Oh, that is such a great question. I'm glad that I did the work to fix mindset issues mm. in myself. So anytime I would bump up against a wall, I would find help to get over it, whether it was a book or a coach, or I would talk to my upline. And because of that, this whole journey with network marketing, I wouldn't trade for the world even if I didn't make six figures. Six figures is the result of doing that work. But what I got personal development wise is so much more valuable. So I'm really glad that I leaned into that. Like, oh, I'm uncomfortable here or I have a block here. I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm really glad that I, I don't know if it's, that I did it or I knew how to do it. But this idea that I created a community that was centered around something other than the product, mm. something bigger than the company. And so for my community, we are all about reconnecting the human spirit to nature and Ooh. uplifting the planet through plant medicine and being more out in the earth and giving back. So because of that, when there are the inevitable problems that happen with a company or a product, it's just life and business. Yeah. My community is stuck together by glue because it's something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, yes. Okay. So, for those of you and I don't know if this is something you're familiar with, Aaron. There is a book out there called Tribal Leadership. No, but it sounds like I'd love it. <laughs> Absolutely. That should be your next self-development piece because tribal leadership in there, it talks about the, the level five tribal leaders because there's five levels of tribal leadership. And the people who are at level five, basically, are the, are the people who are able to bring together a community of people around an idea that is bigger than themselves. So it's, we're not just a bling community. We're not just an oil community. We're not just a insert product here community. This isn't the only thing that brings us together. It's this, whatever the other thing is, right? And in your case, it happens to be the connection to earth, the connection to plant medicine of, I'm assuming of all kinds. <laughs> Of, you know, plant medicine being a part of wellness. Oh. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And it helps, it just helps you weather the storm. It helps you deal with changes in the market. Mm -hmm. And it also helps you deal with the times, you know, in network marketing, there can be times when a leader wants to step down mm -hmm. or a leader isn't performing and you have to have a hard conversation. And when you have that really solid community and friendship, you can 
you can navigate all those waters where I've seen teams fall apart because they didn't have that. Because when times got rough, they didn't have the glue that's kept the community together. Mm. Oh, so that's such a good question. Okay. So good question for somebody who's either on their way to le- six figure six figure leadership or wanting to get that. What can be my glue? What, yes. What's my community built around? So by the way, that just might be the title of today's episode is what's your glue? And they're gonna be like, what does that mean? Yeah, now you know. Glue. For those of you imagine, who looked in the- <laughs> You know, imagine this. A friend of mine and someone on my team brought this to me one day. Most of my team is in Oregon. Okay. And she said, you realize that we have over 14 women in Oregon that make six figures. Woo! And and right? Woo-hoo! And she goes, that's cool for the obvious reasons, but you know why it's cooler? What if we need to organize around an issue? What if there is a person in our community that gets sick? What if there is a political thing that we need to get around? We have the power to gather over a dozen six-figure earners that are women and say, we're going to go make this thing happen. Mm. That's like world-changing. So that's what I'm talking about, bigger purpose, yeah, bigger reason. And then you spread that vision to others. So your recruiting conversations become so much less about whatever product you're selling or whatever company you're with. And it becomes, what are we going to do together to make this world a better place as a community of empowered, wealthy women? And I say women because most of us are women. I know there's men too. but (laughs) 76% 76 of all direct sales and network marketers are women or identify as women. Okay. We've got that out there now. (laughs) Yes, because it it is mostly women. Not to leave you guys out, but you guys understand in this industry, you are outnumbered at this point in time. So if you don't want that to be the case, recruit more more dudes, y'all. So um, no, absolutely. I I think it's that, that, I think that really is an important piece in this is that what changed for me in my direct sales business, and anybody who's been listening to the podcast long enough has probably heard me tell this story. What changed for me was when I had the realization that this business was bigger than me and bigger than what I wanted, right? Because it literally saved, this business literally saved someone's life. So I had a hostess who became a team member without her husband's knowledge set that money aside and got out of an abusive relationship because of it. And when she called me to tell me that that's what was going on and that's why she had joined the the team and was such a freaking rock star, I went, who am I to hold this back anymore? Anytime yeah. I started feeling like, mm, am I going to, am I going to do the business opportunity presentation? Or-? Yes. Because what if I hadn't at that one party And shown her what was possible to to save her life and the life of her children. What if I hadn't? Yeah. Oh, wait, once you, I mean, that makes me want to cry. Right. And and that's exactly why I do it too, is the the pathway this can give women. I remember myself, like I'm a I'm a drug addict, party girl with no money, no future, living off food stamps. And now I'm the full breadwinner for my whole family. And if I hadn't found network marketing, no, I would definitely, I would be working, um, who knows what would be happening. A lot of things would be happening, but I would not have been able to carve this path out for myself or my family. And it is such a gift, but it's hard work. Like, I don't want to fool anybody. Right. It's hard work. It doesn't, it's not handed to you. Yeah. The the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. (laughs) So, you know, it's it's definitely important for people to understand this business is still a business. It you know the only difference is you don't have to worry about setting up a brick and mortar, right? A, A physical store. You know, you have this opportunity to, but you're still working and you're still doing business the same way an insurance salesperson does or a real estate person does or you know the only the difference is a product i i tell people 
product and in compensation model, right? I tell people the only difference between direct sales and network marketing, and, and I'm putting air quotes around this, traditional business is the compensation model. That's it. It's true. It's the compensation model. It's how we get paid. When you think about it, all businesses, regardless of compensation model, have three things in common. They need to get new clients, retain the clients they have, and grow. Because if you ain't growing, you die in, right? Very much like a plant. If a plant is not growing, it's dying. That's all there is. True in business too. So the difference is traditional businesses grow by hiring. Network marketing grows by team. Then, Compensation model, only difference. That's it. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is similar. So just the, you have a business. Like anybody who tells you you don't have a business, hmm, if you're training, if you're listening to podcasts, you're reading books, you're hiring coaches, you're doing online courses, you're taking steps towards being a better business person. You're a business person, even if you're not selling yet. That's okay. Not done. But start taking freaking action. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's such a this and that we were talking about is, yeah, it's going to take some time. You have to learn some skills. You might not hit a home run every time, but you do need to progress and you do you need to sell. But Put your perspective into place. Just remember that stat that I told you. It usually takes three years for most businesses to turn a profit. If you were to open a franchise, you'd be spending a million dollars to open that franchise. Mm -hmm. Network marketing, you can get started for usually about a hundred bucks or less. And mm -hmm. you can start making an income on day one. Like it's very simple. You sell the product, the company pays you commission. You build a team, you get more commission and more bonuses. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do that. And the way to do it is simple, not easy. And I feel like we get confused mm. as we think, well, if it's simple, it's got to be easy. This isn't easy, so it can't be simple. So then we complicate it. But yeah. it is really simple. How many times mm -hmm. a day can you tell the story of your product and your business? The more times a day you tell the story the better the numbers are, the more people that'll say yes. Most people are going to say no to you. So if you mm -hmm. go out and you hear your first no and you quit, that's not going to work. You have to go hear a ton of no's, a ton of no's till you get that one. Yeah. And I think a lot, so much of this business is us training our disappointments and being mm -hmm. so centered in knowing our mission and what we're doing so that we can keep putting the word out there, keep offering the story yeah. until we get that person like you're talking about that mm -hmm. says yes. And it's actually their lifeline. Yeah. It's more than a yes for them. It's or how, what it was for me, which is like, whoa, this is my ticket out of this particular type of life. And I'm going to go make something else happen. Mm. Yes. Okay. So let's change gears just a little bit here. So We've talked about the things you're glad that you did. What are the missteps that maybe oh. you took on the journey? Because we all do. Let me tell you. Thank you, Facebook Memories, for reminding me of all the times that I posted things that I now tell people not to do. Yeah. Because. <laughs> oh, yeah. The mistakes. Woo. So yes. So what's, what would you, yes, there's so many. And what's one of the things that you would like to caution people against because you're like, mm, nope, that doesn't work. Let me help shorten your learning curve. Don't do this in your business, in your journey to your first six figures. Yes. Okay. So the first one is don't expect people to do this. So we go, you get so excited. You have your first rep. And you're like, she's going to be double ruby rainbow diamond. I just know it. And then you put all your eggs in that basket. And you're like, I can retire because she's going to go do this for me. Don't expect, like a, a mentor told me once, treat everyone like they're the top leader in your company and don't expect anyone to do anything. So make sure that you're working harder than anyone on your team. Mm -hmm. And I have made that mistake before where I thought, you know, in my, in my company, it's you get your three and then they get three and they get three. 
Yeah. And I stopped at three. And the, oh. okay, great. Y'all go do it. And then, you know, one dropped off and that dropped off and I'm, I'm plugging holes and I'm plugging holes until I finally figured out that you have to build in my compensation plan wide and deep so mm. that there's always another person that I can go work with. If you yeah. decide that you're going to take a vacation, no sweat off my back. I'm going to go work with this person. That's one big mistake is just don't ever stop recruiting. Don't ever stop building. Don't get into management mode. Yeah. Don't think, oh, my team is, I, I have it. I'm good. I can just lead calls and lead trainings. Like I always want to be at the top of the leaderboard. I always want to be doing, I want to be in the trenches so that when you come to me and say, this happened, I can tell you, oh, that happened to me last week too. And here's what I did. Here's mm-hmm. how I worked through it. So I think that's the number one mistake that I would caution against. I would also caution against overworking. Ooh, so yes. <laughs> you, at some point you said, you know, what, what happened between day zero and six figures mm-hmm. and what happened between day zero and six figures to me is I worked my butt off to the point that when I hit six figures, I was extremely depressed. Ooh, right. Not the, <laughs> not the feeling people are expecting. <laughs> and I was, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, what? what is this? Like I made, I made it to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and you're depressed. Mm -hmm. And it was a coach that actually helped me see that I had let go of all joy in my life. Oh, I just worked and worked and worked because it was do or die. Mm -hmm. But I I could go back in time. I would have sprinkled in days off and I would have taken better care of myself and I would have enjoyed the journey instead of white knuckled the journey. Now, don't be mistaken. I don't mean that you can just kind of law of attraction your way to six (laughs) years, you know, laying on your couch, like eating bonbons. What I'm talking about is Mm -hmm. like everybody else in business, we have a work week, we Mm -hmm. have work hours, and then you take time off and you take vacation and you rest and you rejuvenate. So don't, don't burn yourself out. You don't want to get to the finish line and be like me and mm. have to rebuild your life. So at the end of my finish line, my relationship failed. I was not as healthy as I wanted to be. I didn't have friendships outside of my business. Mm. And I wasn't really enjoying my life. So now, many years later, I've been able to find balance and to, to revisit my center there. And I think the the other mistake that I made, oh, this one's really important. It has to do with personal dynamics. So when you're building teams, you're working with people and people come with drama. And as a leader, we can sometimes think that it's our job to fix people's problems. Mm. <laughs> and I had many times where a leader would come to me with a beef about somebody else and I'd get right in there, try to work it out. And that's triangulation. That's where you end up on the drama triangle. And it's much, much better if you encourage your leaders to work out their differences on their own or problems that they have with whatever it may be. My, my message now is I see you. I, I see that you're having a really hard time. And I trust that you're resourceful and you can figure this out. It saves me a ton of energy. And mm-hmm. then I don't get bogged down into interpersonal dynamics that can get messy. Yeah, absolutely. Especially since, you know, when doing this, if you get too involved, you then become somebody who picked sides or, yes. right? And you don't want that. that's <laughs> not beneficial to anyone involved, right? At all. My gosh, I feel like I could keep talking to you about all of this forever. So, so we've gotten what you're glad you did, what you wish you hadn't done, right? So that's good. Badass crew, go back and listen to this again and again, because there are so many fantastic nuggets in here that if you are somebody who has been, has a goal of getting your business to six figures annually, this is a great start. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. So, Erin, this has been absolutely fantastic. 
And not only that, you also have put together a really cool guide for the Badass Crew. Would you tell us about this guide that you have for them? Yes, absolutely. So I believe that we all have the ability to change our lives if we want to. And so I've compiled a lot of the things I used on my journey to take myself from washed out party girl to six figure leader. And it's called the Be Your Own Damn Savior Guide to Living the Life That You Desire. It's so good. There's a little bit of aromatherapy in there. There's some mindset in there. And it should just help you get started to understand that you have what it takes. You have it inside. Go make your dream life happen. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so we have the link in the show notes. It's a little bit long to say out loud. So it's in the show notes if you want this. Now, the other cool thing is this is the first time because this is early in 2024 that this is coming out. We also have her link in the podcast gift vault. So I've created a vault. It is badassdirectsalesmastery.com forward slash vault. If you would like to get access to all the gifts of every guest that we can grab and find their links and put it together in one place. So yes, you should still go listen to all the episodes and <laughs> find the gift and then go listen to the episode and like, absolutely. So I love this. Be your own damn savior. Like my audience is like laughing their asses off right now because they know that this like so fits with me and they all know that I'm going to go look at this myself. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. This has been such a fabulous overview of how to get to six figures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate you sharing this with my audience. And I know there are people who are going to be very grateful for this. If they would like to reach out to you, how would you like them to connect with you? I love it if you find me over on Instagram. I'm Jasmine and Juniper Living. Send me a DM that says badass and I'll know where you heard this. <laughs> and I'd love to hear your story and any of your challenges and just be a friend to you on the journey of network marketing, direct sales, making yes. awesome lives. Love this. Fantastic. <laughs> and badass crew. You know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.